Sharon. Thank you for all you do. Uh, God bless you. God bless everybody coming on here this evening. And um, we decided to do this in two parts because having Wally on my shoulder for a word from the Lord uh, could get tricky. So we have to show reverence for that. And um, everybody feel free to, um, you know, as I'm reading the word, word, praise the Lord. And I'll explain why he's so old in a minute. Um, praise the Lord and hallelujah. Just please try to keep the chat on topic, moderators. Please try to keep the chat on topic. And, and um, Wally is 39 because African gray parrots live 70 years. You normally have to put them in your will and will them to people who will care for them. They live an incredibly long time. So Wally's about middle-aged uh, right now in his life and starting over. So for all of you out there who are middle-aged and starting over, Wally is right there with you. And so we'll do a fun fact session about African gray parrots. We'll do a broadcast uh, with that, which uh, with Wally. So hello to everybody jumping on. I'm going to get my shawl on. Chris has now uh, gone out there with the dogs. And uh, hi, Wally. Wally's in a cage like there. He's in a really big cage. So, and I mean like five feet tall. It's, it's a big cage. So we are thrilled to have him. He is getting checked by the vet this week. The avian vet is coming to our home and um, he's getting his beak trimmed. That is the one thing he desperately needs is a beak trim. And so uh, we are just so happy to have him and we're glad he was able to give everybody a good laugh. So let's just pray and get right into the word, shall we? Good laugh. Um, going, uh, you know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So God bless everybody coming on. Hello to everybody. Yes. Thank you, Corey. Um, Corey, I believe is a moderator on Facebook. So thank you to all of our moderators on Facebook, um, as well, who are uh, doing such a good job there as well. While he's eating now, he's worked up an appetite from all that imitating. So father God, in the precious name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we come before you, Lord. We praise you that you are a mighty God. We praise you, Father God, that you are an everlasting Father, a righteous judge. We praise you, Father God, that there is none that is above you or could ever match your perfect holy name, Lord. Lord, we come before you, Father God, first and foremost, asking you to forgive us of our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Lord, we acknowledge every way we've sinned and fallen short in you, everything we've done that's offensive to you. Please forgive us, Lord. We humbly ask, wash us and cleanse us in the blood of Jesus Christ, acknowledging what your son, Jesus Christ, did for us on the cross, Lord, did for us when he came to this earth, because you so loved the world, you sent your one and only begotten son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And he came as a man you was bruised, pierced on a cross and purchased us by the shedding of his precious blood and reconciled us back to our father in heaven, Lord. And we praise you that after he was buried, he rose again in three days victorious. And we praise you, Lord. We're going to celebrate that resurrection tomorrow. And he ascended back into heaven. He took his rightful victorious place at the right hand of the father where he rules and reigns forevermore. And I declare that Jesus is Lord. And I honor that sacrifice before you. Father, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord that your presence and the presence of the Holy Spirit would fill this office and would fill this home, would fill this broadcast, Lord. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the power of your presence go forth. Lead us and guide us in all wisdom, Father God, in Jesus' name. Lead us and guide us in all wisdom, Lord. By the power of the blood of Jesus Christ, by the spirit of the one true living God, may only the truth come forth. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, I ask you, fill my mouth with your words. And Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, you fill my mouth, my soul, and my spirit with your words, wisdom, knowledge, revelation, pinpoint precision and accuracy and prophetic insight and utterance, discernment and discerning of spirits, wisdom, counsel, might, power, and the reverential fear of the Lord. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding and the joy. Take all the glory for yourself, Father God. You are the potter and we are the clay. 
You are the author and finisher of our faith. We are merely vessels that you fill. That is all we are, Father God. Take all the glory for yourself, Father God, for without your breath of life in us, we don't have life. We love you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' precious name, Yeshua HaMashiach, amen and amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Toby, you better be good in here, otherwise mommy's gonna kick you up. Actually, I'm gonna escort Toby out for a moment because Toby's in here, down here. And so I don't want him to interrupt while I'm doing this, because he spotted Wally. He now knows Wally is in the room. And so basically, you know, they, it's going to take a getting to know you period. Oh, here he comes. Chris, here comes Chris <laughs> to get Toby. Toby, come. Toby, Toby, don't act like you don't oh, know what he's talking about. Come, come. come on, boy, you got to go. On. Go, go, go. Come. Good boy. Come on. Come on. He's stopping at Wally's cage. It's like a sightseeing tour for the oh, dogs around here. Okay. This will be up on the blog, Amanda Grace, the number for him, dot blogspot.com, sometime in the next couple of days. Um, so give Dora Marie, please, a couple days to get it up on the blog. Let me explain to you about this word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. So I didn't expect this word to come because I just delivered a word from the Lord on Passover. And so we're actually going to do a prophecy fulfilled broadcast next week. There is so much prophecy that's been fulfilled that is being kept track of on um, a document that we really need uh, to do a prophecy fulfilled broadcast. We should, because we have to go back to these words and we have to, you know, talk about how and what has been fulfilled. Okay. We have to understand prophecy takes time sometimes to be fulfilled and people want it like this. And the problem becomes most of the events that John saw in Revelation haven't been fulfilled yet. Does that mean John was false? Does that mean he wasn't telling the truth? No, it means there are long-term prophecy and short-term prophecy. Jesus said he was coming again soon. He hasn't come yet. Does that mean he wasn't telling the truth? No, it means he said he was coming and he's going to come when these events in Revelation we see uh, play out, you know, some of them. So we have to understand there is prophecy that is short term and prophecy that takes years, decades, hundreds of years to come to pass. So we have to always keep that in mind with prophecy. And I notice with prophecy, what happens is um, the Lord will bring something to pass fairly quickly in the word to give validity to the word. And then it'll go from there. And it'll be on God's timetable when the rest of it comes to pass. So what happened was the Lord woke me up at 2 a.m. on Good Friday. Okay. And I went into prayer. I went to the table. Remember I told you a story about our new table. The Lord told me to anoint the table that he was going to meet me at that table. And so I immediately went into prayer. And so I was in prayer three and a half hours. And this word came forth. I didn't get to bed till 6 a.m. So, and I transcribed this word. All glory be to God. All glory goes to God. Listen, I'm not the author. I'm just the messenger. The author deserves all the glory. We are servants of the most high God. That is all we are. We are his servants. So he deserves all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Uh, do his name because he truly is the author and finisher of our faith. Glory to God. So I'm going to read the word now. Praise you, Lord. And this is what it says. I'm going to put a time stamp on it because it was at about 5.30 a.m. that this word came Fourth, there must be a lot going on in the realm of the spirit and a lot that is set to occur for me within uh, one week to get two words. These two words, I believe, both came within the time of Passover. So um, two words within this Passover. Remember when the Lord said he was going to put an exclamation point on Passover? Getting two of these words within the same week is an exclamation point in itself. Never mind the, the ship getting stuck in the canal and trying to free a ship stuck in an Egyptian canal on Passover of all times. How ironic. Um, and these other events that happened, there were a few other events, which we'll get into when we do the prophecy 
fulfilled that took place during Passover. Um, and so I think we are going to, we are coming into a very fascinating time. Let me just put it that way. Okay. Praise the Lord. And here we go. This is what the word says. All glory be to God. Praise be to the Lord God Adonai, who sent his son, Jesus Christ, Yeshua to the earth to be Emmanuel, God with us dwelt among us and paid a debt on the cross we could not pay to reconcile us to a father we were separated from. To his name be all the glory, honor, and power forever and ever. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. Let me just fix the camera here. And the spirit of the Lord says this day, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like, and up is capitalized, with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall of great pressure and a great pressing. Now is a time it shall find themselves being pressed. They shall find themselves at the threshing floor. The threshing floor is where they processed wheat and beat basically the wheat out of the stalks shall find themselves at the threshing floor. For I, the Lord, shall thresh the wicked, and as that occurs, what has been concealed shall come out and forth before the people of this nation, says the Lord of hosts this day. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, an Ayatollah and a dragon have merged. So he's talking about Iran and China. Now, I'm going to stop here for a moment. There was prophecy fulfilled the first day of Passover. During the night, I got that word from the Lord. And I told you I had a vision of the number 25. Actual vision. Saw it before my face. It was about 2 a.m. when I saw the number 25. That day, the first day of Passover, there was breaking news that Iran and China signed a 25-year agreement. Now, I see this at 2 a.m. I don't know why I'm seeing the number 25, but this was breaking news that these two countries signed this whopping 25-year agreement. Um, so praise the Lord uh, for that because I released uh, the word that night, but I spoke about how I saw the number 25 at 2 a.m., and then it ended up coming to pass that day, the number 25 was in the news. It may not be the whole reason. There could be a double meaning, but this is part of it. So this is what the Lord is talking about. He's And says the spirit of the Lord this day, an Ayatollah and a dragon have merged in agreement, praise the Lord uh, for seeing that, with an attempt to harm my firstborn Israel. Two countries who have, who serve a principality in whom the in whom they govern, who serve a principality, in whom they govern. Now is the time, or now the time has come, for them to be threshed. Vain entities who have now reluctantly come into agreement to change their focus to Israel first and its brother America, the Eagle second. So the Lord wants us to keep an eye on these two countries coming into agreement. And we only know this because someone sent the news article about it. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, the agreements that have been made are as dust in my sight. They are fallible, meaningless contracts, murder for hire, what is laid hidden in the dark shall be brought out into the light and be placed at the threshing floor. And I, the Lord, shall smack down on both nations and beat and press what is laid hidden in the dark out into the light. A chain reaction 
a chemical reaction shall be in both countries as the temperature is raised and boils take place, says the Lord of hosts, for they shall be squeezed as other countries so go on high alert as they see this unholy blasphemous creature that has emerged from Persia and the Muslims and the Hindus shall squabble for their demons are very territorial and so infighting squabble as even Israel gets into their motherboard and tightly guarded labs. And so explosions shall you see as the mouth is shut of the, the agreement with my, for the agreement, uh, for the agreement with my enemies. So the agreement they've made with the enemies of God and the enemies of my firstborn. So I, the Lord shall shake those nations and leadership so shall be struck and fall a domino effect that reaches across both countries ring around the rosy a pocket full of posy ashes ashes that could refer to another volcanic eruption uh they all fall down all is capitalized i'm not saying it is i'm saying we have to we have to look at things a little differently when the lord is giving a word because he says it shall be as rats consume them for plotting to harm the covenant nations i the lord have so protected and then the lord says for betraying their oath whatever that means and so and says the spirit of the lord this day this shall be a memorable time for even intricate military blueprints and operations shall be discovered that will make paper clips and moabs <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> dwarf in comparison for i the lord of hosts am dealing with moab and exposing the components of a counterpart and says the spirit of the lord this day an exodus into the border, the flood of those looking to capitalize. So there shall be a striking at the border that causes many to turn back as I, the Lord God, see and wanderers, those with the blueprints for a coordinated attack that touches down on different points on the map and monuments and hubs of cities alike. It shall be exposed as it is set to execute. An internal struggle within the middle where office shall oppose officer to get the chains cut and free that those who serve the principality of D.C. so attempted to lock down. However, I, the Lord thy God, am opening up the vault and officers, generals, and those at sea alike shall be disgraced and exposed for betraying their oath for entitlements and empty promises from wicked serpents who destroy whom they use. A huge, huge blowing of a fuse will expose an issue. So we'll expose an issue. So carefully concealed. And I, the Lord your God, shall deal harshly with whom have communed with the serpent, the dragon, and the prince of Persia. For I, the Lord your God, have issued decrees and judgments, for the grace has ceased, and the cries of my people I, the Lord, am so responding to in this hour. By this time next year, things will look different in the country of the eagle. There shall be a turn and a redirecting as those I have anointed are sent back to finish a task and order not yet complete. And I, the Lord, am making a way for this major sweep. Now, major sweep is capitalized. Major sweep of security, military, government, and the church alike. Many will be pushed out by force as I, the Lord, am from my throne speaking order, capitalized in this hour. Law and order, That's cap. those two words are capitalized, against a lawless people. For I, the Lord, am decreeing a thing, and it shall be. And the Spirit of the Lord says this day, there shall be a resurrection in the is capitalized. All capitals here, these two sentences. Prophesy to these bones that they shall live. Speak life, law and order, and a purging of all that is unholy and unjust. For my capital rulings are set to do a sweep of this land. A sweep will reach to the north and the southern parts of the continent, North America, says the Lord of hosts. That could mean Canada and Mexico, too. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, watch southern New Jersey and where Washington crossed the Delaware River. 
says the Lord, for I am bringing into formation those I have so called to work as a unit, the prophetic and the military alike coming together for such a time unlike any other time and forming a spiritual special forces that I, the Lord, shall lead. And it will be a light in a dark place and navigate them through the obstacles at hand. For I, the Lord, see every crevice and warehouse they have hidden their plans and hangers as well. Planes containing their stock that they so use to build their bots, B-O-T-S, and their programs alike that are linked to a wave of crimes stretching across the globe to Israel and the northern and southern parts of North America alike. A burning bush, this you shall see, as past presidents' families now in this time are pressed and family wealth burned for their crimes. For I, the Lord, have decreed it and sealed that judgment for the time of grace, for the wicked have thinned out. So for the time of grace, for the wicked, the time of grace for the wicked has thinned out, and one after the other shall fall down. Suddenly, many shall drop to the floor and be no more. For I, the Lord, shall settle a score that goes back to a speech four score and seven years ago. Our forefathers, dot, dot, dot. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, summer fruit in spring, as I, the Lord, accelerate to do my will. Your armor is on and you are equipped for this burst of speed that shall occur to so bring my plans and purposes to intersect quicker for the sake of your nation, America. The eagle is rising as I, the Lord, speak life into a somewhat lifeless body and command you to live, O eagle, and to take up your mad and walk and your sins shall be purged and cleansed. I shall gut this nation down to the studs to expose the framework hidden behind the walls of unexpected areas, says the Lord. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, the dragon shall make a strong advance. Okay. I, I have strong in parentheses, a store strong in parentheses advance at sea shall make a strong advance at sea with the backing of Persia in order to steal and take territory not theirs to claim. So I, the Lord, shall stir up the waves and cause catastrophes and unexplained accidents, so force a major turn. So as the container ship was so turned, I shall do the same to the fleet of the dragon, and they shall be driven back, or who they are crying out, says the Lord. I have heard the cries of those faithful ones, and I, the Lord, shall protect them from wicked advancements upon their land, says the Lord of hosts. And says the Spirit of the Lord this day, a bomb in Russia, watch and see, will cause opposition to arise, the Lord of hosts. The dragon has spun a web. Now that's interesting, because it's normally a spider. <clears throat> the dragon has spun a web, and those who have so attached markets and economies shall crash as I, the Lord, completely remove my capital hand. However, the underground church I shall protect as their holograms and ideograms. Let me tell you what an ideogram is because I didn't know what it was. It is a graphic symbol that represents an idea or concept independent of any particular language and specific words or phrases as their holograms and ideograms and telegrams shall be found out, says the Lord of hosts. A message intercepted that a worse fall for the ailing leader as a major, major is capitalized, problem arises that cannot be explained and soothsayed away. And a slip of the tongue shall expose their next moves as a cabinet, as cabinet members and VPs already have their redecorating and reprogramming blueprints in hand, just waiting for the time to push capitalize. But instead, they all shall be all capitals here pressed by the Lord God Adonai and squeezed to the point of such scramble and panic that I, the Lord, shall case. Now case, and in parentheses, I'm going to have your cause, but there's a, there's a reason here that it was spelled case first. Case means to look someone or something over carefully with a view um, to go after them later. Okay, like when you're when you're casing a warehouse, back it later. So the Lord is saying here, 
shall be pressed by the Lord God Adonai in such scramble and panic that I, the Lord, shall case cause them to fall into their own pits for their names are so marked on them and haughtiness is lulling them right to such. He's saying their names are already on their pits, basically. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, bridges, trains, cargo, and shipping. Watch, says the Lord, just watch. And says the spirit of the Lord this day, I am muzzling those who have abused their powers and platforms. This is important. I am muzzling those who have abused their powers and platforms. As I tore the kingdom away from Saul, I am tearing away those platforms and positions from those who have so abused them and giving them to who I, the Lord, deem righteous and worthy of such, who he deems, not who you deem, who he deems righteous and worthy. All capitals here. I, the Lord, decide. This is the whole two sentences is capital. I, the Lord, decide such without your opinions, for you do not see the heart, and I do. And tainted motives have caused ravage and spokesmen and women, and I, the Lord, have come to put them down. All capitals. Again, this entire paragraph, the Lord capitalized. And says the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit speaking here. And says the Spirit, hear ye all the inhabitants of the earth. Humble yourselves before the living God to be hidden under his wing and spared of what is to come. For the sword of the Lord and the declarations from his throne have gone out into the earth. The enemy has been overruled and I, the Lord, am cleaning house. Oh, I and, and the Lord and the Lord is cleaning his house, the houses, senates, and parliaments alike. The Ayatollah shall suffer a major strike. As the dragon shall be severed, a mortal fatal wound, it shall be great. The time has come to propitiate and activate what has been ruled. Many of you have been fooled, and so shall be exposed what fools and double-minded men have done and believed. Relief is coming. Just believe on the Lord your God and take courage. Hold your position, and the Lord shall elevate your call for the persecution suffered at the hands of corrupt men. All capitals, exclamation point. There shall be a fall down the stairs. As Joe and Jill have attempted to trample on my hill and here shall be a tumbling down and a lot that's capitalized shall go with. Now, lot could be a reference to lot from Abraham in lot too. It could be a play on words for I, the Lord truly see the strings and pharmacia ingested and injected to achieve a lucidity. A clotting is occurring and taps T-A-P-S capitals is on the horizon as the sun sets as the sun sets on purged by the hand of the Lord. However, the country needs to learn a grave lesson, says the Lord, and return unto me in holiness for this to turn. He's saying you have to return unto me for this to turn. Turn is capitalized. For you are at the precipice. If you shall take the word, your sword and speak it and be bold, that's capitalized and brave, that's capitalized as I, the Lord, your God lead you in this parade. The charade shall be exposed. A strike to the head of social media giant shall be the wound that causes a fall heard round the world. Pray and listen, be watchmen and women as I, the Lord, announced through my being blown and the walls and gates are set to fall. Be ready to take a stand as I, the Lord, send the captain of my army, that's capitalized, to lead you in this quest. It shall be miraculous and a trembling to the wicked for the fear of the Lord is I am God, I am, that's capitalized. I am God, I am Thus saith the Lord of hosts in the name of Yeshua, Jesus, as such. And that's where the Lord ends. That's where he ends. That's where he ends. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, the Lord has a lot of parables in this particular word. And what I'm going to say is you can't look at it with human eyes because God sees things very different than we do. 
So we could say, oh, God definitely means this. But God didn't mean that at all. He meant something completely different. And that's what happens when people second guess prophecy, not only prophecy, but second guess words from the Lord, even scripture. Okay. This is what happens. You know, when the Lord says there's going to be a Purim like event, it means it's not going to happen on Purim. Otherwise, he'd say there's going to be an event on Purim, like he did with me with Rosh Hashanah. When he says there's going to be a Purim-like event, it means there's going to be an event that is going to be similar to what you saw happen with Purim. It's going to have those kinds of qualities. That's why he calls it a Purim-like event and not an event on Purim. You have to read carefully how he's wording it. And so let me tell you, that ship getting stuck and being turned could have even been the beginning of a, the Purim like event, um, depending on how the Lord meant it. So I just wanted to make sure uh, that, and, and the word lot, when the Lord uses the word lot and capitalizes it, he could be meaning somebody like lot, Abraham's nephew, not quantity. So we have to really pray, test the spirit, and know that the Lord may meet it completely different than we're looking at it with our human eyes. That is why when you say test the spirit of prophecy over time, watch how it comes to pass. Because many times you may say, gee, that came to pass totally different than I thought it was going to. Well, because God sees things totally different than you do. He has a view because he's the Alpha and Omega that he has basically, you know, the bird's eye view. He's omniscient, he's omnipotent, he's the alpha and omega, he's the beginning and the ending. And he sees the whole block of time, the whole event at once. So when he's speaking about something, he's already seeing this from the end to the beginning when he's speaking on it. So he's speaking on it, knowing the end. So that's why many times when the Lord, you know, is telling people to hold their position Hold on. Trust and pray. It's because he already sees the end. He sees how the end is going to turn out. So he's telling you, I can see it. Even if you can't, you need to trust me and pray and hold your position because I can already see how this is going to turn out. And so we need to understand that. Um, that the Lord, when he gives prophecy, we can't put it in into the confines of our human mind, meaning... We have to sometimes know that the way God means it wouldn't be necessarily the way we think. And that's where prayer and discernment and watching how it plays out and comes to pass. Okay? Like I gave you an example when the Lord said, ring around the rosy, a pocket full of posy, ashes, ashes, they all fall down. That had to do with a plague, I believe. It had to do with a very serious um, condition um, that went across a certain country. And so the Lord could be meaning it as, um, uh, you know, something like that happening or a backfiring as such, or ashes, ashes could actually mean an eruption, could mean an explosion. So this is why we have to really pray and really sort of read the paragraphs and sentences God even has around that in the word to get a better idea of what he is trying to do. Let me tell you something. If we think wickedness infuriates us, how much more infuriated do you think the creator of the universe is? How much angrier do you think he is about it? How much in more sense do you think he is? He is. However, God is long suffering and God gives somebody every opportunity to change, repent, and stop what they're doing before that period of grace runs out. And I don't mean um, grace in general. I mean, you know, in situations, there's a grace period many times. And God has an allotted time for them to stop what they're doing, drop to their knees, and repent. And so basically, the when he says the grace period has thinned, it means it is quickly running out on certain matters. And when that happens, you see the Lord act. So basically, um, 
No one's saying, oh, let me, let me read this to you. Shelly, um, I see, this is interesting. This is a good example, um, for me to put up that Shelly just, I just happened to see this to see how we look at things differently with prophecy. She wrote, Amanda, you said on 12, 19, the Lord says this day, the intrepid watch for a ship such as this to move into position for the intrepid was on display in New York for a time. And she said, I think he was talking about the ship in the Suez that was there for a time period. Okay. That's a good example of looking at things differently in prophecy. Okay. Where now when the Lord says, watch for a ship such as this, the intrepid was enormous. Still, it's enormous ship. The Lord could have been talking about the enormity of the ship. Watch for a ship as big as the intrepid to move into position. So this is why we have to pray and test and watch as things begin to come to pass, how they come to pass, because it teaches us then more and more and sharpens us how to go back and look at prophecy, okay? How to go back and look at words of knowledge, the scriptures the Lord wants to show you, okay? I'll give you a perfect example of um, how scripture gets twisted, same concept as with prophecy, okay? Same concept. When Jesus set, tells, he's, he's teaching, right? And he tells the, the people listening to turn the other cheek, right? People from the pulpit and not even from the pulpit, from the audience, you know, or whatever you, the congregation, from the, you know, conferences or whatever you want to say have said many times, oh, that means no matter what anybody does to you, you have to turn the other cheek and let them do it to you again. And let them, you know, that's not what it means. It doesn't mean you incessantly take abuse. Turn the other cheek. Back in biblical times, when one person wanted to sue another, they would go to the city gate and they would smack them across the face and that meant they were taking them to court okay and if the person who was smacked smacked them back it meant i will see you in court but if the person who was smacked turned the other cheek and let the person smack them again the matter was settled the matter right there then was settled that is what turn the other cheek means. And that's what happens sometimes when we look at scripture through Western eyes. And then we try to discern it through Western eyes when it was written in a Middle Eastern culture. You know, the, the scripture was written within the confines of a culture in the Middle East. And so turn the other cheek many times is totally misinterpreted. To mean, oh, no matter if somebody does anything horrible to you, just turn the other cheek and let them, do, you know, let them do it to you again. No, that's not what it means. That's not what it means. So the same goes true for prophetic words, okay? There are people out there that jump the gun and go, oh, this is what it meant and it didn't come to pass. So they're this. No, that may not be what it meant at all. That's what you're thinking it meant. That may not be what God meant it to mean, which means then you're misconstruing his words. You're misconstruing what he's saying, and you're taking it and twisting it to try to prove or be very careful how we look at scripture and how we look at prophecy. Okay. How we look at scripture and how we look at prophecy. And this is why we have to pray it over time and watch. And this is why we're going over this week. We're going to do a prophecy fulfilled broadcast. You know why? Because we get to read the word and then we get to read how it came to pass. And we begin to, we can begin to then discern and understand when God is talking and he's literal and when God is talking figuratively, when he's talking directly or when he's talking in a parable. OK, so this is why. Thank you, Wally. Wally is putting the exclamation point. That's Wally. 
um, the African gray parrot. This is why it's so important to just take these and pray, test the spirit and watch for how these things come to pass. And, you know, in a three page word, some of this stuff may not come to pass for 10 years. Some of it may come to pass right away to, in a way, highlight the validity of the word. So I wanted to explain that to everybody because I think we are quick to jump the gun with scripture and with prophecy. And we have to understand God is a very different timetable and he has a very different way of looking at things than we do. You know why? Because he's holy and perfect and we are fallen and flawed. And so in our finite minds, we can only see things sometimes certain ways. God does not have that problem. So God, when he's looking at something, sees it in not only the stretch of eternity, like outside the confines sometimes of time of what we view as time, but he also sees it as the whole issue from beginning to ending. And this is why many times he says to us, have faith, hold your position, because he's already seeing the end product. All he's telling you to do is have faith. He can already see it. He knows what's going to happen. Your job is to just have faith that what God is saying is what he's saying. And that God is seeing the end of the road. He is seeing the end product. He is seeing the situation beginning to end. Your job is to trust him that he can navigate you better than you could navigate yourself. He can navigate this country better than we could navigate ourselves especially at this point. We can't look to man to save us. We have to look to God to save us because even when they went into Jericho, this is a great point. I'm going to show you this. This is a replica of the Ark of the Covenant. Here are the cherubim, right? And then here's the mercy seat. And it was wood overlaid in gold, and inside you had the Ten Commandments. You had the almond branch that budded to signify that it would be Aaron's line, that would be the priesthood, and you had a bowl of manna within the Ark of the Covenant. Okay? Now, I'll tell you something else. Thinking out of the box for a minute. Evergreen, that ship... Evergreens, A, are called evergreens because they don't turn brown and lose their needles in the winter. And evergreens are popular around Christmas time. So you see, when you start looking outside of the box, you might be able to start to put more things together. Now, the Ark of the Covenant, when they were going in in jo Book of Joshua to Jericho, their first battle, right? This had to go before them. Joshua was not going to save them, okay? Their army, by himself, themselves, were not getting into Jericho. The Ark of the Covenant, representing the presence of God, had to go before them, okay? Into battle for them to be successful. So they carried it. They have these little handles here. And they all carried it into battle, right? Right? And this was the presence of the Lord going before them into battle. And without this going before them, the presence of the Lord, there would be nothing Joshua could do. There would be nothing Israel's army could do to win that battle. Okay. As so proven by the battle of Ai that they fought next, where the accursed thing had been taken from Jericho and they lost there was nothing Joshua could do or the army could do to help them win when the presence of God was taken from them, when the Lord lifted his hand, when they took the accursed thing and then tried to go into battle that way. This is why it's so important for the presence of the Lord to go before us, because this this what this means. If God before us, if God goes before us, who can be against us? If the spirit of the Lord is going before us into battle, into that situation, who could be against us? So you have to understand the spirit of the Lord has to go before us in this battle, in this country. It has to go before us, the spirit of the Lord, because no man is going to save us.
the spirit of the Lord going before us and leading anointed men and women in battle is what is going to do it. There is an order to this. And if this isn't at the head, it doesn't matter how talented the people are in the back because this has to be at the head. And so we have to understand this. And in a way, people still aren't getting this in this country and they're still looking for a man to save them. God operates through men and women all the time. He does. But if the presence of the Lord doesn't go before them, then what do you think? We're going to have battle. We have the battle of AI. So you have to have the presence of the Lord and the living God going before us in this battle. And if a lot of shepherds out there and not even shepherds attack and destroy because they have nothing else better to do. You know, if everybody was about the, the father's been and try to destroy other shepherds, okay, other ministries, other, if we were really about the Lord's business, we would be way too busy to be doing those things. Okay. And so when I see that happening, I know the threshing is at hand. When I see that going on, there is a threshing that is at hand. There is a threshing that is before us in this country. And you know what? That's why you won't see me on other platforms writing comments. You won't see me, um, you know, purposely speaking names of, of other rabid shepherds. When the Lord says rabid shepherds, you know why that's all he gives me? Because he's the judger of the heart. So he's telling me that this is going on. There are rabid shepherds, but I know which one is which because I judge and discern the heart, not you. So you have to understand sometimes why the Lord gives a word in the way he gives it and why he only will give the amount of information he does because he is the one judging the heart. I am not, and I am way too busy having to be about my father's business to be caught up um, in such ridiculousness that I see. Seriously, honestly. And so uh, Jesus too, Jesus only engaged the Pharisees when they tried to engage him in front of the people. He then put him in their place. Otherwise, what he's doing, he was about the father's business. Didn't have time for them, didn't care. Didn't have time, didn't care. He had to be about the father's business. And so that's how we have to look at it right now. You know what? I have to be about, because if everyone is about the father's business the way they need to be, there is going to be a very powerful agreement in this country that the wicked don't have an answer for. And this is why I'm saying all of this. We have to be busy with the assignments he gives us because each one is a piece to the puzzle, to the whole puzzle. Each piece is a part in a huge picture, okay? And if we're each busy with our piece, we have a whole picture and we have agreement and the wicked still don't have an answer when the true remnant and people of God come into agreement and are about their father's business. It could be teaching. It could be motherhood. It could be many things, okay? Owning a business. But when we are doing that together, we're in agreement. We're operating in unison. And when the power of agreement happens in the name of Jesus Christ, what we ask the Lord for, he will not withhold from us. That is why Babel, God had to intervene because the wicked at that moment got the power of agreement. And they knew that if they came into agreement with this, they could do it. And the Lord even said, what can be withheld from them? They're all in agreement. And that's why he had to disperse Babel from happening. So if his people are coming into agreement and each doing our part, and then we cry out to the Lord, he's going to go, what can be withheld from them right now? They're crying out to me in agreement in Jesus name. And rabies, when the Lord says rabid, a rabid animal just so we know, a rabid animal is an animal that is very, very about raccoons a lot and other, you know, other animals. They, what, what, what does, what are the characteristics of a rabid animal? 
they do the opposite of what they're supposed to do. So they come out during the day to hunt instead of at night. They are highly aggressive and venomous, okay? These are the qualities and characteristics of a rabid thinking clearly, nor are they seeing any more clearly and doing what they're supposed to instinctually do. They're doing the opposite. So those are some of the, when the Lord says rabid, we have to go and look, okay, what are the characteristics of a rabid animal? And then take that and apply it to that part of the word and go, if these are the characteristics of a rabid animal, then I, these same characteristics are going on with rabid shepherds and rabid people, men and women alike, who have platforms. And we have to take it, you know what I mean? And apply it that way. Because the difference is, many times when an animal is rabid, they have to put it down. They don't have necessarily a cure, I believe, when it gets to a certain point. Um, and so basically we have to look at that and apply it that way. A rabbit too, and a rabbit animal runs just completely out of sorts, runs amok out of sorts, a rabbit animal. So, um, so yes, we have to pray. We have to pray for them. And we have to um, pray right now in this time. And yes, there are rabid people out there. There are. And they need prayer. And we have to pray for them and continue to do our part. Because we have to understand something. There are battles we get involved in that are unnecessary. Unnecessary battles, okay? We're not called into every battle. We're only called into the battles God calls us into, okay? Example, you have different branches of the military. You have the Navy, the Air Force, the Army. You have Marines, Semper Fi. They're each called into different battles. They're called to occupy different areas. And a Marine that is, or someone in the Army that is occupying say a fort in, in oh in somewhere in Europe okay or Canada or Philippines or is not called to protect a fort in Texas they're called to protect a fort in the Philippines or another country so how can they protect a fort in Texas at the same time? No, you have a whole different set of individuals in the army that are called to protect forts in Texas, forts in other parts of the United States of America. They can't be called to two places at one time. Their assignment is their assignment and they have to stick to that assignment till they are relieved of that assignment. You see, that's how we have to look at it. We are called into our assignments.